What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Her Lounge podcast. Um, I am so happy it is podcasting day because I've been watching so much stuff on Netflix. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, I've been watching some stuff on there. Um, before I get started, guys, just a friendly reminder as you guys know, we are still having our 50% off sale on her apparel. So go on there, get some shopping done, guys. I'm going to start going live and showing you guys how to piece some of these summer things, even in the fall, because they can be versatile. I promise y'all. So um, go on there, make sure you use promo code SUMMERSELL50. Um, so just so you know, there's a lot of new stuff coming. So you'll see a lot of the um, coming soon stuff already posted. So make sure you check that out. And not to mention, uh, there's the stuff that's under the summer sale is the only stuff on sale because there are some new bags on there that are new. So I don't want anybody to get confused thinking that that's part of the summer sale. But go on there, get you some merch, um, get ahead of it. Well, you know, do we really have a, a fall here? That's the hard part about it. But I've got a bunch of stuff that's coming in that's perfect for Houston weather. So thank you guys um, for your support. I will be announcing a bunch of pop-ups that I will be doing. And um, again, herapparel.tx.com. So go on there and get you some merch. All right, guys, enough with the promotion stuff. So um, you guys know I always like to start with the positive quote. So here we go. Um, mindset. The driving force in the quest for success and achievement, a mindset that combines discipline, strength, confidence, and ambition is a powerful mindset. This can achieve anything it sets its sights on. A powerful mind can achieve anything. If you're wondering why that quote. So I actually watched the George Foreman documentary y'all and I had never seen his, I mean I know of him and I obviously I know that he's a boxer and I know that he's got the 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 you know George Foreman grills which I had I think we have all owned one but I didn't know much about his story I didn't know like his background I didn't know like any of that I didn't know that um he was a preacher on top of that and I still didn't even know that he lives here in Texas still currently in Houston actually to be exact in fifth ward. So I had no idea whatsoever that, um, any of this was happening. So anyhow, um, I actually watched it on the, uh, on the plane ride to Houston, um, this last time we were out of town and because I had other subjects that I was already planning to talk about last week, I didn't mention it, but as I was watching it, I couldn't help but to think like, how um, there's one thing that a lot of successful people have, and that is faith. I don't, I don't like um, know what it is about that. But if you like talk to just for example, anybody, they'll say, I'd like to thank God. And, you know, because of God, you know, and my faith in the Lord and et cetera, there always seems to be a lot of, um, of success in whatever that is. And, um, he was not a believer, which I thought was kind of crazy because his mother was such a believer, but I guess when you're poor, you're barely able to eat, your mom's barely able to like support all of you guys. It's like, how can you possibly, you know, not have those type of feelings of like, if you're there, then why aren't you here? I mean, look at us, look at, look at the life we're living. So I totally get um, why he felt that way. Um, you know, I was watching it and it's, it's just crazy how kids are so mean and they can actually mold you into being like either a very timid person or a very insecure person, or perhaps an introvert, an angry person. You know, sometimes we don't ever know as kids, if you go back and think about like, people that you interacted with that you thought like, man, why do they act like that? Um, it makes you wonder why, um, what's going on in their home. And, um, I was really good friends with this girl and not that this was part of the movie or anything or the documentary, but I'm why the point of this is because we're talking about bullying and things that we don't know about. So, um, I went to school in elementary school with this girl and, um, if you opened up your eyes really wide, I mean, I'm trying to, if you're watching this, but you know, I've got such small eyes, so I'm not going to really do much, but 
So if you opened up your eyes really wide, she would get super scared and cry. And I was just like, you know, as a kid, because you don't, you're not experiencing any of the stuff that she's going through. You have no idea why someone opening their eyes that wide scares you or what they're afraid of, right? Years later, I'm talking about years later, it was a coincidence that she and another friend of mine happened to like meet at work. And so they worked together and they became friends. And then she and I were, um, my girlfriend who, well, they were both my friends, but my girlfriend said, Hey, we're going to go hang out with my friend. And I don't want to say her name just in case she listens to this. Um, but she said, you know, let's go hang out with her. And I said, sure. And when I saw her, I was like, oh my God, we went to elementary school together. Do you remember me? She was like, oh my God, you were the only kid that didn't like bully me or, you know, try to like scare me or any of the above. I come to find out guys. And so it, it like broke my heart so much. Like broke my heart so much when she told me that the reason those were, those were all reasons of she was being sexually abused by her stepfather. And so that was trauma was coming on over into her life at school and so forth. And, you know, I don't think we realize sometimes, I think even as adults, what someone is going through and how our actions or our words can really hurt someone. So I was like, Oh my God, I never knew that. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, we played together. We, she, I never went to her house, but she would come over mine. Um, but it was kind of crazy to hear that as an adult um, and her being an adult. And I really don't even know how the subject came up and why we talked about that. And I just said, she actually, that's how it's because she said I was the only person that didn't bully her. And I don't really know. I've just never, I'm not a bully. That's not my personality. So I guess that's the reason why, but, um, and obviously she was my friend as well. So why would I do that to her? But anyhow, um, I say that because in this movie, because George Foreman was so poor, the kids would make fun of him. And because, you know, he was so hungry, sometimes he wouldn't be able to eat at school. I mean, it was just awful, 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 awful. Um, he ends up joining, I guess, some type of job corp and uh, program where it's like a military style. But when he graduates from this program, he'll have a job and all these things will be offered to him. So he joins and in there is when he meets the person who would begin to train him in boxing. And that's where he took out a lot of his anger and frustration. Um, And uh, there's a lot of people that I know that are in the like, a boxing world and inside the the UFC world who they turn to wrestling to boxing or whatever, because this is how they cope with their anger issues, which I think is better than beating up a stranger. Right. Um, so, um, it was quite interesting to see how he trained himself so fast to be able to be a part of the Olympics because he was so determined. And it goes back to the quote that I just said, y'all, where it says mindset, it's the driving force and the quest for success and achievement and mindset that combines discipline, strength, confidence, and ambition is a powerful mindset. So he definitely went in with a with a ton of discipline because he knew he wanted to be, um, make it that which no one thought that would be possible. And he did. And he won on top of that, the strength he had, the confidence he had, which was something he didn't have as a kid, you know, and it came to him through boxing, you know, um, and having a powerful, a powerful mindset, you know, to like really be focused and want this and, you know, really want to prove that he could handle this. And he did. And he achieved it. As it says here, what mindset means is this can achieve anything it sets its sights on. So having confidence, having strength, having discipline, having ambition, all will get you to that goal, right? Because everything in life is about a mindset, right? It's like either you're going to go through it and you're going to actually accomplish it, or you're not going to accomplish it because, you know, you just 
have you don't have the confidence, you don't have the discipline, you don't have the strength, and you know you definitely probably maybe don't have the circle of friends or the or this family support to do this, which makes it hard. Um, but in it all, I really loved the story of how somebody you know um, just did the impossible, went from looking like he was not going to go down the right path to you know actually um, joining the job corp, actually training to be a boxer, did amazing. And then he loses a, a, a match and he's in the back and has like a, almost like a, 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 a almost death experience. And in there he, I guess, um, not, I guess, but he has an, you know, out of body experience where he's like asking God, please don't take me, you know? And he doesn't. And he comes back and he decides he no longer wants to be a boxer, but he's going to be a preacher. And so he starts preaching, which I also didn't know this part about him. I had no clue whatsoever. I thought this guy just boxed. I thought this guy just got some kind of, um, you know, uh, collaboration with the grill, with the foreman grills to where he was selling that after his retirement. I had no idea about none of this. Um, and it was really quite interesting to see um, his story in regards to like how he devoted his life to God and to preaching. And, you know, he asked for forgiveness from, you know, his ex-wife who he cheated on and, you know, did stuff, you know, that probably whatever they didn't go too in depth with it. But, you know, when you're cheating on someone, obviously it's caused a lot of emotional roller coasters for that person. And so, when he accepts the Lord, he goes back and he, he, you know, apologizes to her. And it's just like, he's apologizing to all the people. He even apologized to Muhammad Ali when he fought him. And he thought that was funny. And he was like, wait, what, what are you, what's going on here? And so he just like, did not want to fight anymore. And, um, you know, he goes through this little situation where he trusts someone, um, and with their, all his money. And then of course, you know, it never fails that sometimes some, the person you trust the most is the person that dicks you over, you know, and screws you over so bad. It's like you're left with nothing. And so, you know, this recreational center that he had created in his community was now being shut down because there was no money to keep the lights on and he had no clue. And that's how his fight, um, his return from retirement uh, came back and, um, and, uh, his wife had a vision, um, that he was going to win. And, you know, he, she was like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just see you winning and, you know, this whole thing. And I know for those who are non-believers are like, okay, where are you going with this? Well, for one, I hope that if you're a non-believer, I hope that, you know, you find, some, some, some sort of belief out there. Cause I hope you don't think that this world is just functioning with just cause, you know? Um, but I do want to say that it was amazing to see that this man took what, regardless of him, you know, um, going through all these trials and tribulations and, you know, everything that you can possibly think could go wrong. He experienced it. And, you know, he found another wife. He did remarry. She was great. Um, she was also a Christian woman who he met in the church. So, um, they built this back up together and they were able to do more. And he continues to be a preacher here at his local church in fifth ward, which again, I had no idea, I had no idea whatsoever. Um, and it just makes you think about our purpose in life. Like, are you really doing enough currently to bring purpose to your life? Are you really working towards whatever it is you're trying to accomplish? Or are you just sitting on a bunch of like pity party, um, why I can't or what's in my way and why I can't move on or I can't do this or I can't do that. I mean, I'm not going to act like I've not been guilty of feeling that kind of way sometimes, but I, I snap out of it immediately because I start to think to myself, um, 
you know, I read this quote the other day that says, stop thinking I got to, and instead change those words for I get to, I get to wake up in the morning. You know, I get to have a job. I get to be able to have my home, you know, and as much as we don't like want to think about pay- paying bills, but getting to pay your bills on time is a luxury because that means work is good for you. That means your job is providing, you know, a, a, a something for you to be able to sustain your life, for you to have whatever it is that you have, uh, for you to provide for your kids. If your kids are in private school, if your kids are in activities, all those things cost money. None of that is cheap. So, you know, there's a purpose for everybody in life. And sometimes I feel like we don't, um, fully, uh, I guess, attack it to the best of like our potential of what we can do or what or what's out there for us. And we're just kind of sitting, hoping that one way or the other, it'll happen instead of having the discipline to actually do it. Instead of having, you know, the, um, uh, I, the focus to actually get on top of, to, of whatever it is you're trying to do. Sometimes you just have to have that difficult conversation with yourself and be like, okay, this is enough. I've said I wanted to start my business. And I'm just using this as an example. Um, if you're somebody who's been wanting to start a business or, uh, you know, if you're working on trying to lose weight, like I'm tired of being, of being unhealthy. Uh, because if there's one thing that I can honestly say is, um, health is definitely wealth. And I've had plenty of conversations uh, with you guys through podcast about, you know, how I think being overweight is very unhealthy. And, um, and I'm right now, that's something that I struggle with, because you know, I'm, I'm not used to being the size that I am now. So finding that inner strength, again, the motivation, the discipline to get back at it, isn't as easy for me as it was five years ago before I had my first child, you know? So I'm back on my discipline game. I'm back on being focused. I'm back and looking at the vision of what I want. And I think that's what we lose sometimes is the vision of what we're working towards, excuse me, and what it is we're trying to really accomplish and what it is that we're really wanting to do. So if you're wanting to buy that rental property Start getting the information on what you have to do. What what do you have to cut? Do I have to try a no spending week uh, this week? What does that mean? That means I don't get to have my Starbucks this morning. That means I don't get to just eat out. That means I need to start packing my lunch so that I can have this savings so that I can do that. So I can do this. I can take that trip, et cetera. It's like having that motivation again needs to I think that um, I really do feel that a lot of us, including myself, um, lost a lot of motivation during this pandemic um, because we all know this shit was planned um, because it's hard to get back into something when you were kept inside for so long and you were feared because, uh, you know, you were scared because you didn't know what was happening. You didn't know if this was contagious. You heard so many people were dying. And so like you're your state of mind just went everywhere. Like what's going to happen? What's going to happen with my business? What's going to happen with my future? Like, I don't know. And so did I lose my job? Am I going to lose my house? I don't have money to pay my bills. You know, all of these things that were going through everyone's mind, getting back on that track again, isn't easy. So this podcast today really was about, you know, if you are in a funk, Let's find what has, what used to motivate you? What put a pep in your step before you got into this funk? You know what I'm saying? If it was a bad relationship, because we talked about that last week, if it's a bad relationship, you got to let that go. You got to let it go, let it go, let it go. Like she says, uh, what's that little girl's name? Elsa on that cartoon. Um, You got to let it go because it's time to move on and it's time to find the person that is going to make you happy. It's it's time to find the person that does complete you, that does have the same morals as you do, the same uh, political views as you. You know, this this is whether right or left. It doesn't matter. You got to find the person that is right for you in all aspects. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't need anybody holding you down and pushing you down and not being able to move forward and accomplish what it is that you're doing. Um, 
One thing that I started to do, and I think I've mentioned this before on the podcast, is a monthly, um, there's monthly goals. I no longer do like a, a New Year's resolution, quarterly goals. These are monthly goals. And it's just three things that I want to work on per month. And it's three steps that help you accomplish that one goal. And then you write them down put it on your refrigerator, put it in your car, wherever it is that you spend most of your time and constantly remind yourself as to what your goal is and what you're trying to accomplish. Like I said, if you're somebody right now who's struggling with finances, you got to sit down and look at where the issue is and how you can possibly make more money. Do you have stuff in your house that you can sell that you're no longer using? Any old shoes, any old clothes? Could you have a garage sale? to help yourself, you know, uh, get some, uh, save up some money, you know, is there like extra jobs you can do somewhere so that you can, you know, um, like I save up for whatever it is. If you're trying to pay off debt, if you're like trying just to, in general, build up your savings, you know, what can you do to get there? And it's just, I, I feel like sometimes if when you look, you're looking too far ahead, it makes it seem like, oh my God, I'm never going to get there. That is going to take so long. And, you know, I don't know if I can do it versus if you see it for today and you plan it for this month and you know what you, what it's going to take for you to get there and you have a monthly plan, regardless if it's a long-term goal, break it down into monthly goals so that you can take the steps to achieve that. If you're trying to invest, you know, what do you have to do? What is your credit? You know what I'm saying? Do you need to get your credit right again? You know what I'm saying? Do you need to like, uh, do you want to buy home, you know, owner to owner? Do you want to like, you know, find the right realtor that can help you out. That's got the right information for you. Like, what is it that you want to do and actually sit there and get your mindset right? Because Guys, literally, this is the last quarter of the year. This is it. We're like almost done with 2023. And if you sit there and think about like, damn, did I accomplish everything that I wanted to do for this year? And if your answer is probably like, not really, then take this last couple of months to actually get your mindset right. You know, start thinking about how you can have a, a successful end of the year so that next year you're working towards continuing what you started in 2023 so that it could be a more successful 2024, if that makes sense. Um, a powerful mind can achieve anything. So if you're right up here, then you have the ability to make it happen. If you're not right up here and you're struggling with mental health, then we got to get you that mental health. Like mental, you got to get you that mental health. You got to get that help to work on your mental health, guys. What is it going to take? Is it going to see a therapist? Is it going to work out? Whatever it is that helps you deal with your mental health, do that. Talk to your pastor, talk to a friend. Um, if it's childhood trauma, like maybe it's time for you to go talk to somebody. I don't know. Whatever it is that's going to help you clear that mental health, you know, you got to get on it so that you can move past that and you can achieve whatever it is that you've been trying to work towards instead of just kind of staying in this like rut and just not getting nowhere and just keep saying the words I wish or man, if only, you know, all these words that you put out and that come out of your mouth. It's either going to be for the good or the bad. And if you keep spitting out negativity out of your mouth, then you're probably, probably always going to have a negative mindset and you're probably not ever going to be able to achieve anything that you wanted to achieve because you have just pretty much put into the universe that you can't because X, Y, Z. But if you have the mentality of I can, I'm going to do it. I'm going to plan it. I'm going to take the steps that it, it need, I need to take so that I can make this happen. Regardless if it takes you a while to get there, you're making a plan and you're putting out nothing but positive energy for yourself, for your family, for your future. 
So remember that the next time you want to talk bad about yourself. Remember that next time you want to say, you know, oh, look at her. I wish I had what she had. No, boo boo. No, boo boo. Don't wish you wish what she can have. You need to wish that you will have whatever it is that you're working towards. You need to say it out of your mouth. Oh, that's cool that she has that. Yes. Um, me and you need to talk. Like I need to pick your brain. Like I'm trying to work towards that too. How can you help me? Like, I would love to talk to you in regards. I'm trying to, I don't even know. I'm just going to use buy a new car. Like, did you buy cash? You know, how many miles do you suggest this? So you suggest that, you know, always surround yourself people that are doing better than you, because then those are the people that can feed you, you know, what they already went through. And then when you try to take, you know, charge in, in what you're trying to accomplish, well, you'll remember that person, what they said in regards to, I don't know, like, don't invest your money in that because, you know, that's really hard and then you'll, you'll never see it grow. And so it'll stay there for a while, blah, 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 blah. I'm just giving everyone examples of the, of, of things that people, you know, are trying to work towards. And at least like things that I know that we've tried to work towards, um, I was in a, like a little, in a pretty, I don't want to say the word negative. Cause like I said, I don't really like to speak anything that I don't want to happen. But when I derailed, because it really did throw me off during this whole pandemic, um, there was a lot of bad sp speaking bad. For example, I didn't want to do my social media because I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't like the way I looked. And then it takes sometimes someone else to make a comment or mention something. But then Ilsa said, well, you know what? There was probably a lot of women who would love to see your journey, regardless if you don't feel good about yourself. There will be a lot of women that can relate to where you are currently and where you're trying to get to. And then watching your journey will be what they what can motivate others. And I thought, wow, I never thought about that. I never thought that, you know me posting, you know, pictures of what I'm trying to sell, right, is going to help someone see the difference in, whoa, look, look how she was and like, look where she's going. Because guys, this is not a game. I done had the surgery. And now I feel I have no excuses. There's only one little thing holding me back. And that's the hormone, hormone imbalance, which I'm trying to fix myself without having to take medication. So, so far so good. But now I feel like there aren't any excuses for me. What is my excuse now? Before it was, I had the fibroids before it was my uterus thought it was 10 weeks pregnant. Now that's been removed. My hernia has been repaired. I got a regular looking belly button. Now I ain't got one that looks like the a lizard on a sing, you know, popping out everywhere. So, you know, I feel like now there's no excuses that I can make, except I've got to find the discipline now. I got to find the focus. I got to find that mindset that I had before having children where I, I wanted to see my body change. When I first started bodybuilding guys, I went from being a Zumba instructor, a personal trainer to one day just saying, I got to get on. It was something on my bucket list for me to do. And I just said, damn, I'm almost 35, girl, and you ain't never, you ain't got, you ain't got on this bodybuilding thing. You better do it now before you turn 35. You said you wanted to accomplish it before 35. And so that put a little pep in my step. And so now that is, that little pep in my step is what I'm looking for. And for some reason, watching the George Foreman documentary made me think like, hey, you have got to get it together. Like, and for me right now, it's not a financial thing for me right now. It's not those things, right? For me right now is a couple of things. It's working on myself as far as like my weight is concerned, working on my health so that I can get my hormones balanced again and working on my brand to continue to grow, grow it, to continue to um, expand and hopefully be in more than one little store, pop-up store. You know, I'd like to be able to, when everybody wears something, it's like, oh, that's a her apparel. That's, that's my goal. So these are goals that I have set out for myself that I want to do. And I think that um, sometimes we lose that focus and we just have to find it again. And we have to get 
our mental health right because there's so much so much mental health issues happening right now in the world in general drug use abuse etc that we have got to get our mind right have our mindset right so that we can continue to be better humans one two just be instead of being haters be motivators and show others what having a good mindset, having a, a good positive outlook, you know, whether it's, you know, things are going rocky, nothing's perfect, guys, nothing is perfect. I'm sure if you talk to any successful entrepreneur, they will tell you about all their ups and downs until they got to there and now it's running smooth. But it, even when it's running smooth, there's something that always pops up, trust me. So, you know, um, I just wanted today's podcast to be about you guys finding that motivation, um, finding that mindset, because it is the last um, quarter of the year. And it's time to like, just finish strong, finish strong in 2023. So that you continue to continue to work on whatever it is that you set your mind to in 2024. And then it's like, I'd love for you guys to send me messages and emails about what you set your mind to in 2023 and how it's going in 2024, because I think we could all use a little bit of push here and there. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't joined us on over on the Patreon for our bonus episodes, come on over guys, come be a part of her world. Go to Patreon forward slash forward slash, excuse me, her lounge podcast. I love for you to come on over and be a part of our soldiers. Thank you guys so much for listening. See y'all next week.